You wouldn't put cheap, low-grade fuel in your car and expect it to perform, right? The same goes for your 3D printer. That's why you'd use high-quality filament in your high-speed 3D printer to achieve great results without sacrificing print speed. So, does budget filament mean budget performance or can pretty also be fast and strong? In this video, I'm going to test two kinds of deep leaf filaments which have been generously sent to me for testing by Illigu. They agreed on my review guidelines, didn't give me any guidelines on the content of the video and the test data we see throughout the video is real and unadorned. From checking the specs and looking at the overall print quality, the filaments will be tested amongst others for tolerances, tensile strength, torque and impact resistance. To do that, I use my test gear of which I built some especially for this video, like the tensile and the impact test machine. I also bought a digital torque adapter and a digital micrometer to give you some hard numbers to make up your own mind. I got some surprising results, so you should watch the complete video not to miss that. Intro check. Complete. Engaging print protocols. The deeply filaments come in a cardboard box with a sticker telling about the filament type, diameter, recommended printing temperature range and the color. There are some numbers which may be a serial and or lot number. The filaments are wound up on cardboard spools in a vacuum sealed bag with the usual small desiccant bag to avoid the acquisition of moisture during storage. Looking at the windings, they are not as proper as I would like it and cross over here and there. Hopefully this won't lead to tangled filament during printing. As long as the windings don't mess up, it seems okay for a filament priced at the lower end. I definitely like the pastel colors as well as a bold orange and deep blue and I'm especially excited to see the look of the mud filament in the finished print. I couldn't find any real technical specifications in the form of a comprehensive PDF, therefore we have to make do with the information on Amazon. At least we get some information on tensile and flexural strength, which I will of course check myself later with my test machines. Rapid Peel A Plus claims to support printing speeds up to 600 mm per second. I think the 250 mm per second given for Rapid Peel A Plus may be more realistic for everyday use. We will see how fast is still good later. The claim tolerances are very tight with just plus minus 0.02 mm, which is less than 1.2% variance. I already have my digital dial gauge here to check the first 5 meter of each spool for that. For tensile strength, Deeply gives greater 60 MPa, which is not bad. My tensile test machine is already waiting to check that on the test specimens printed in various orientations. The ISO notch impact strength is given as 9 kJ per square meter. I'm curious if I can verify that with my simple ISO tester. Finally, we are given the recommended printing temperature range and the recommended print bed temperature range. I will choose the midpoint of these to print out the test specimens. For each spool I measured the diameter at 10 points 50 cm apart from each other with my digital micrometer. As we can see, the advertised tolerances are almost spot on for the Rapid Peel A Plus Orange with an average diameter of 1.757 mm and a standard deviation of 0.01 mm. The matte teal green peel A is closest to 1.75 mm at an average diameter of 1.756 mm. Here the standard deviation is only 0.007 mm. Therefore we can assume that they both stay well within the advertised diameter and tolerances of plus minus 0.02 mm. The rapid peel A plus blue with an average diameter of 1.723 mm, even when taking the tolerances into account, barely scratches the low end of the required diameter, but only slightly. The standard deviation here is 0.02 mm, which means the variance of the filament's diameter is more than two times higher than for the first two. The worst of all is the mud ice blue PLA. It's completely out of the range. Since I only measured the first 10 meter of each spool, that could be just being unlucky or I messed up while measuring that spool. I repeated the measurement a second time just to make sure, but got similar results. With an average diameter of just 1.714 mm, there's no way to get ever even close to 1.75 mm and if that's not enough, the standard deviation is the highest out of all four filaments at 0.135 mm. 
I don't think that the results are representative for every spool of that filament. In my opinion, this is a total failure of quality control. We'll see if and how that influences the quality of 3D prints. Before I print the benches, I first determine the maximum possible flow rate of the filament with a flow rate test. Interestingly, all filaments achieve a high flow of about 20 to 23 cubic millimeter per second. I was expecting to see higher flow rates for the Rapid PLA Plus here. Nevertheless, that should be enough to print at 250 mm per second with a layer height of 0.2 mm with all filaments. And it also fits within the advertised 600 mm per second printing speed when printing at a layer height of 0.1 mm using a 0.4 mm nozzle. So I use a determined flow rate to print a Benchy with each filament at the specified print speed of 250 mm per second. However, the 250 mm per second is barely reached with a Benchy. What's interesting here is that all 3D benches printed without problems. I thought that we should be able to see some defects or under-extrusion on the one printed with the mud ice blue pill A. With a low smasher diameter, there should be an under-extrusion of about 5%, but it's hard to see any difference in the quality between the benches. All look more than okay, considering that they were printed at high speed. There's nearly no ringing, the overhangs look good and none of them suffer from stringing or other major problems. I put a lot of time and effort into making this video for you and I'd really appreciate it if you'd like and subscribe to the channel. Before I dig deeper into the properties of the filament strength, just a thanks to this video sponsor PCBWay. PCBWay is best known for its high quality PCBs. You can get 10 PCBs starting at 5 US dollar, which is awesome to give your DIY projects a professional touch. Besides PCBs, PCBWay offers CNC machining and 3D printing services as well as sheet metal fabrication and injection molding, making them a perfect choice no matter if it's for small DIY projects or larger companies. If in doubt, give them a try, you won't regret it. Time to bring up the ISO tester which I closely built after CNC Kitchen's machine. So hopefully we'll get results that can be compared to his results. With each filament I printed 10 test specimens, 5 lying flat and 5 vertically. I increased the shell lines until no infill was needed. I then tested each filament fixing them in the vise, resetting the drag dial to its initial position and releasing the hammer from the top position. I found sources saying that 150 degree would be better, so I will evaluate that in future tests. Here are the results for the flat printed test specimens. Taking into account that reading the angle from the drag dial is a bit coarse and that the printed test specimens have variations as well, the results look plausible. Two things are noteworthy. The mud peel A performed better than the rapid peel A+. What is much more interesting is that the filament that performed worst in the diameter tolerance measurement performed best here. The standing samples had only about one third of the strengths and broke cleanly across the layers. Next, let's check how good the filaments handle torque. I was prepared for breaking my samples, but the test revealed an unexpected twist. The samples for the torque test were printed using 100% infill in standing and flat orientation. Then I fixed the specimens in the vise and tried to apply torque evenly until they broke or a full turn was made, whichever happened first. I think the test setup I chose is not good for getting a clear picture of it. Nevertheless, I don't want to withhold the results from you. Unsurprising that the samples printed flat are stronger than the standing ones, whereas in the impact test the weakness comes from the layer bonding and relies more on the chosen printing parameters. I wasn't able to break the flat printed samples, they just twisted and stayed that way. Let me know in the comments if you know a more reliable way to do a torque test. Having an idea about the tensile strength of your 3D prints can make the difference between make or break, especially if you want to print functional parts. For testing I built this tensile test machine. It can produce a pull forth of about 3000 newtons. For the test I printed these test specimens. They have an area of 10 square millimeter in the test region. Let's start testing the standing test parts first. The control program I wrote for the machine makes it easy to do several tests in a row and combine the results in a pretty graph for comparison. There's a significant difference between mud peel A and rapid peel A. The rapid peel A withstands approximately 40 megapascal, whereas the mud peel A samples already break at about 30 megapascal. Next, let's see how much stronger the flat printed specimens are. 
The result is very interesting. While there was a clear distinction between the MUD and Rapid PLA, there is no such clear difference between them when printed flat. All filaments reached more or less a tensile force before failure of 100 to 100. 10 megapascal. That's an impressive strength, knowing that usually PLA lies around two-thirds of that at about 50 to 70 megapascal. I didn't expect that 3D printed parts would be that strong. Would you like to see more filament tests on 3D Printing Geek or do you have any ideas for improvements? I don't know why I didn't do this earlier since I've always wanted to print the Moai statue. First I printed this small one using the mud ice blue. Then I wanted to go big and printed it again with a mud teal green. Doesn't the mud finish look great? I only forgot to activate the supports. Luckily, besides the small filament drooping at the chin, which I can easily fix using a hot air gun, it came out excellent. To check out the look and finish of the Rapid Peel A+, I chose to print the spiral fidget toy. That's one of the most satisfying 3D prints you can do. Look how one part can completely pass through the other. During my tests and 3D prints, the deeply filament always printed without trouble, even the one that had a too low diameter of only 1.723 mm. No problems. It stuck well to the bed, which I heated to 50 degrees Celsius for the prints. The colors of the filaments I got for the test look great. I especially like the pastel-like colors of the mud filaments, but the vibrant and shiny surfaces of the Rapid PLA Plus are not bad either. There are many more nice colors available to select from. It performs great at high printing speeds, having a good flow and almost no stringing. The price for a 1 kg spool varies depending on the color and if it's on sale, but you can get it between 12 and 19 US dollar, which is okay. It's neither the cheapest nor the most expensive filament, though comparable filaments tend to have a slightly higher price. One thing Deeply should work on is quality control. You can't advertise something to be consistent within given tolerances and fail so badly then. It's been almost two spools out of the four that I got for the test or 50% that didn't meet the expectations. I think it was just an unfortunate coincidence that I got this filament spool and it's probably not the norm. Overall, Deeply offers a solid range of filaments for various use cases. They provide the needed strength, are easy to print and the mud is perfect for aesthetics. Thanks again to Elegu for making this review possible. What do you think of these results? Have you tried Deeply filaments? Let me know in the comments. If you found this helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more 3D printing content and check the description for links to these filaments. Keep printing strong and reliable until next time here on 3D Printing Geek.